Awesome. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Leo Gonzalez. Um, I am the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Holland Ames University. Um, I did this presentation, I think, maybe two years ago, so I'm very familiar with uh, Castro Valley and all the families out there as well. Um, I've been with Holy Names University. This Monday will be six years for me. Um, prior to that, I was a graduate student at Holy Names University in the MBA program. Uh, prior to that, I was an undergraduate uh, student here studying business at Holy Names University. So um, I am a student athlete or I was someone might be unmuted so I can hear you. There you go. Um, so uh, yeah, I've got a lot of experience definitely at Holy Names University um, and I have some, some great knowledge about a lot of the private schools, especially in the Bay Area, but nonetheless in, in California. So I like to call this the private college presentation. It's very simple, very basic, um, just to kind of give you open, you know, open up your minds and your, your ideas to possibly going to a private school here in the near future. So uh, again, I welcome any questions. If you guys wanna unmute yourself and ask or drop them in the chat. You're more than welcome to. Sure. So let's get this sure. uh, show started Hi. here. So I always like to start off with just a quick definition of like private, uh, you know, what does it mean to be a private school? Uh, at least in the state of California, we uh, have CSUs, which you might know by now, UCs, and then of course the private schools. So uh, let me, if you didn't know, the CSU system in the state of California is one of the biggest uh, systems in the nation. So, um, just, just nonetheless, sometimes the private schools are, are you know, are kind of left, left in the dust, just to say. Uh, but for us, I like to say that, uh, you know, a private school is one that's not controlled by the state or the government, uh, typically independently owned by a person or a group. So to give an example, at Holy Names University, uh, we are independently owned by a group. That group is the Sisters of the Names of Jesus and Mary. It is, uh, we are a religiously affiliated university and many of the private schools in California are religiously affiliated, which, would, which we will get into in just a second as well. Not everybody is religiously affiliated. So uh, quick definition there and do invite you all to mute yourselves as you enter the, uh, the, the, the room here today. I'll go on to the next slide. Um, uh, here we have the Association of Independent California Colleges and Universities. So kind of a mouthful, the AICCU is what we like to refer it to, but it is um, it's the organization that, that kind of oversees everyone. It's kind of, um, you know, we're, we're, we kind of come together as a team for, and in, in, in it originated from legislation, essentially. So um, what students or faculty or people know, the Cal Grant program in the state of California, uh, you have Cal Grant A, Cal Grant B. Well, that was mainly used for just the public schools. And so um, back in 1955, the AICCU came together to coordinate with the state aid, the state scholarship program, which again is now what we call the Cal Grant program, okay? The 85 members, you can see the green dots on the, on the map there represent um, you know, the institutions. Uh, we are all WASC accredited, which uh, when you're looking at institutions, you know, hopefully everyone, you're looking at universities that are WASC accredited. Uh, degree granting, and then we're all nonprofit. So there, there might be private schools out there that are for profit, and they're not part of the AICCU. Okay. Perfect. Let me go to the next slide here. Uh, as I mentioned and kind of alluded to a little bit earlier, um, the AICCU represents you know 34 based uh, 34 faith based institutions. Um, we have a little list here. Um, Nonetheless, you know, Santa Clara in, in Santa Clara, uh, California is a Jesuit school. Simpson University is a Christian school in Reading. William Jessup, they're right outside of uh, Sacramento. Uh, believe they're also Christian. And then as I mentioned, Holy Names University, we are a Catholic university. So um, just talked to a student today that's looking at Pacific Union College in Angui, California. They are an Aventus school. So, you know, Saturdays for them is, is you know, they don't do anything on Saturdays to, to say the least. Uh, Jewish, Lutheran, and Muslim uh, universities as well. So Cal Lutheran in, in Southern California, um, over there in uh, Southern California, uh, what's the, I forget the name of the city, uh, but as I always say, it's where, where the, the Kardashians live, you know, that area. So um, again, many of the institutions of the AICCU are faith-based, but not all of them are. And we'll see that 
here on the next slide. So um, Samuel Merritt University here in Oakland, California, uh, beautiful Oakland, California, they are a healthcare education. So they are a private school, they're a nonprofit, but their main focus is gonna be healthcare education. So uh, next time you go to the doctors or you're at the doctor's office, uh, you know, ask them where they went to college. Uh, believe it or not, a lot of the Samuel Merritt uh, University uh, alumni work here in the Bay Area. A shout out to my sister. She's an alum of Samuel Merritt. She's a, she uh, did a nursing program there. So for the most part, they are a graduate school, um, but they do have uh, one undergraduate program, which is the BS and the Bachelor of Science in Nursing. So nonetheless, most students are transferring into Samuel Merritt. Uh, their, their main pop student population are transfer students. Um, so they're not offering English and bio and all the general ed. They, they, they're looking at those last two years. Uh, Dominican University of California. So you got to use the whole name because there are other Dominican universities in the United States. Uh, they were a religiously affiliated institution. Uh, they were founded by the Dominican sisters, but nonetheless, uh, more recently, I uh, don't believe the Dominican sisters are affiliated with the institution. So they consider themselves a liberal arts education. So that essentially there's no faith behind it now. And I will also mention uh, University of the Pacific. So, um, that their main headquarters is gonna be you know, Stockton, California, but they do have a regional campus in Northern California uh, in San Francisco, my understanding. So they have a, a great uh, dentistry program for anybody that might be interested in grad school uh, in, in, the, in the dentistry program. Awesome, and I'm gonna go on to the next slide. And again, if you guys have any questions, definitely drop it in the chat. I am trying to monitor that as well. Um, I wanted to give these numbers. I had to do some updates because the numbers have changed. Uh, this is gonna be uh, student enrollment at these institutions. Uh, I'm focusing obviously this morning, this, this afternoon, excuse me, on the, on, the, on the Bay Area. So you can see the numbers here. Stanford has about 15,000 students as of the 2020, 2021-2021 uh, academic school year. University of San Francisco, 10,000. Santa Clara has 8,000 students. University of the Pacific, 4,000. That number, I think, is their main campus. They have more students at the regional, but I just wanted to stick to the main campus there. We also have St. Mary's College uh, in Moraga. They have about 3,000 students as of 2020. Dominican University, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, 1,800. Holy Names University, uh, about 1,000 students as of 2021. And then Menlo College, 894 students. So I, I like to kind of give a, a breakdown of student enrollment. Um, because I think it's important for students to know that, you know, depending on what school you're going to, you know, what does that classroom environment look like? You know, what's the student to faculty ratio? You know, what are the resources that are gonna be available to you? I will say that most of these private schools here that are listed, um, and I know, I, th I think even USF, they still have that small classroom environment that a lot of students are looking for when they're going to a private university. Um, so USF, I think has maybe 15 to, 15 to 20 students as their student to faculty ratio. At Holy Names, we're looking at eight to one. So pretty small classroom, a very intimate opportunity for our students to, to really get to, to learn the, the, the material at hand and be able to make those uh, connections with their professors and as, and as well as their classmates. Awesome, let's go to this next slide. So the AICCU, and again, there you after today's presentation, you might not ever remember the AICCU. Um, because we don't really talk about it too much as private institutions. Uh, we know every, people just essentially know the private schools, but the AICCU, if you wanted to, you can go to their website. Um, they are you know, promoting, again, um, that, that uh, pathway of going to a private school. So they uh, recently just reached out to me um, in, our, in our office about making updates. So they do have a like first year, you know, fr uh, first you know, freshman, uh, guidebook, and they also have a transfer guidebook, which we'll get, to, we'll talk about here in a few seconds as well. Um, so we just sent that information this week, literally it was this week I was working with them. Um, and they're going to, they have those opportunities and that data and that information on their website. So the, so you can definitely go to the AICCU website and look at all of the schools that participate within the AICCU. Couple of things. Um, I think everyone is typically very familiar with the CSU application, the UC application. And so, because they're, those are two big systems, definitely here in the state of California. Um, when it comes to private schools in California, 
we're not all on the same application or we're not on the same system because we're all, you know, we all have our own ways of, of doing admission. But one of the best opportunities that I can provide for that rising senior that's going to be applying to many institutions is using the Common App. And so you'll see it here on this PowerPoint. It's got, it's got like a screenshot of what it looks like on your cell phone. So the Common App is, a, is one application that you, the student, uh, would fill out. You know, you're going to have to fill out, you know, first name, last name, address, email address, your, you know, submit your transcripts, all the above. So you're only going to have to do that once. OK, you'll do that once and then you're able to send this application to many institutions. OK, so uh, for the most part, all of the private schools in California are are using the Common App. Um, but across the nation, if you're thinking about going to other institutions outside of California, uh, they're also using the Common App. So I think currently there's a between seven and nine hundred. I can't remember exactly the number, but seven to nine hundred schools that are using the Common App and about 250 are completely free to apply, okay? And I mentioned that because when that time comes for you to start applying, you know, it's gonna be $60 here, $60 there, maybe $40 here, $40 there. So it does, it can get expensive to apply to some of these institutions. And so I always recommend to my students, hey, go to Common App. Essentially there's 250 free schools that you can apply to. Um, it's just gonna take time and energy, so. Nonetheless, at Holy Names University, we don't we don't require a fee. Uh, there's no fee waivers because we don't we don't charge anybody to apply to our institution. So um, we accept the application via Common App. Uh, you fill it out; it gets loaded into our system. But many of these institutions, like ourselves, you can go to their website and you can apply directly to the institution. Again, if you did that, you would have to spend time, you know, applying at many institutions. Whereas the Common App, you know, it's just one place. You fill out the information once and you can send that to all the institutions. There might be a few more questions um, based on the institution that they might be asking. Um, so we used to ask like, you know, why do you wanna to go to Holy Names? Or, you know, what is your religious faith? We don't ask those questions anymore, um, but nonetheless other institutions might be doing that. So those might be a few more things that you might have to do to apply to some of these institutions, okay? Uh, let's see what else I have here. Transfer students, again, um, most, most of our students coming to Holy Names are going to be first-time freshmen, and about, you know, 25 to 35% of our students are going to be transferring in from another institution or one of the community colleges. Our website does a really good job um, of listing the articulation agreements, and I'll highlight that here, articulation agreements. Um, and we have them all listed on our on our website. So anyone uh, from any of the community colleges within the local area, to say the least, um, you can go on there and you can you can see what is it what's going to transfer directly into Holy Names University. Okay, and I definitely recommend that. Um, uh, we have a, a great GBSN program, a generic uh, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Uh, we get students from Merritt College as well as Los Medanos. Those are the two big schools here in the Bay that focus a lot on the medical, um, you know, the, the nursing track. And so we have our we have very specific articulation agreements with those two institutions on some of the nursing nursing courses that you can transfer into Holy Names University. Awesome. Last bullet point here it says consider the wraparound experience of living on campus and net cost for the last two years of your college experience, as well as your return on investment. So, you know, again, to, to, to talk a little bit more about transferring in, you know, you spent the first two years potentially at a community college, you know, saving a lot of money, hopefully, and, and paying uh, for your tuition. Um, just realize that, you know, when you do transfer, you, you know, tuition could be a little bit more. Maybe you decide to live on campus, but, you know, what is the return on investment on your total education when you're looking at the four-year cost? Okay. Cool. Um, we'll definitely talk about that set up campus visits or a virtual campus tour due to COVID. It seems like every institution has a virtual campus tour. So we definitely have it. It's on YouTube. So if you, uh, wanted to check out what our, our campus looks like, you know, you can go to YouTube, look at campus tour and you can, you can follow like an eight minute video on what our institution, you know, looks like. Um, but we are slowly opening up for, for visits to this evening. I had a student um, coming in from Vallejo, uh, California for a campus tour with their parent. And so we, we like to do uh, private tours for our students as well. Typically right now, we're working with all of our seniors that are, are gonna be graduating soon enough. But during the summer is also a great time to visit the campuses. 
uh, especially if you're thinking about maybe applying to somewhere out of the area. So uh, during the summer, could you go visit, you know, Stanford uh, or USC, um, University of San Diego, make those visits. Most institutions, we're not changing much over that course of a year or two. So maybe next time you come back, there's a new building or there's a new parking, parking structure or whatever that might be. Um, but, you know, definitely get onto these campus soon and sooner rather than later. So you're not spending that senior year where you're kind of running around, going to these schools and trying to figure out where you want to make your decision, where you're going to land. Awesome. I don't see any questions yet. So we'll go on to the, uh, the next slide here. Uh, so AICCU, the steps to financial aid, money, 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 right? Uh, there are two applications in the state of California for students that could, uh, they could be submitting. Um, so the FAFSA is going to be for, you know, essentially a, a U.S. citizen um, that, uh, you know, lives here, all the above. DREAM Act is going to be set for someone that maybe is a resident, uh, AB 540 status. So I'm not going to touch too much upon that, um, but that application is there as well. Um, the FAFSA can be done, uh, will need to be done by March 2nd. So, as, for example, at Holy Names University, um, if you submit your FAFSA prior to March 2nd, we offer a $1,000 FAFSA filing grant. So as long as you continuously uh, submit your FAFSA before March 2nd, um, that's going to be an, an extra opportunity for, for you, the student. Don't forget to plug in the FAFSA code. So the example 001253, just to say at least, our, our code is 001183. Um, and so you, the student, you know, the family, We'll have to add the institution to your FAFSA so that the institution can receive that information. Okay, so a lot of the institutions we work off the FAFSA not until we receive a FAFSA will we be able to you know uh, process that that data and provide financial aid. It looks like I do have a question here, so I do want to pause and read that question. Common App sounds great, but if there's a school that's your number one choice, would it be possibly? signal to the school that you have a stronger interest in them, particularly if you apply directly instead of Common App. I'm wondering if it's so easy on Common App that there might be a higher ratio of people applying for their lower choices. Oh, that's a, uh, you know, I, I'll say at Holy Names, we're not necessarily, um, we don't look at that, you know, we, you know, the application at the end of the day just kind of gets loaded into our system. Um, I would have to look at the, I would have to ask a, a very, you know, I, I guess I could say a selective school. So I, I'm thinking about the Stanford's and the USF's of the private sector. Uh, and that would be a question for potentially one of theirs, uh, for one of their admissions counselors is that, do you guys see the, is there any weight to applying directly to the institution or using the common app? So for us, there's no weight to us. It's just an application that's coming in that, you know, has their, their general information. So I hope I answered that question. I might have not had the full answer for it. Um, and I'm not saying that we're not selective. It's just that, uh, you know, not many students know about Holy Names University and we're always working on, on getting our name out there. Uh, but it seems like a lot, of, a lot of people know USC, a lot of people know Stanford, a lot of people know University of San Diego, a lot of people know University of San Francisco. So those are the big, you know, private schools that have a really big name recognition, just to say the least. But, I don't want to answer that question, but I would say that, you know, it, it'd be in your best interest to potentially reach out to um, one of those uh, admissions counselors at that institution. So, awesome. My, sex, uh, my second uh, bullet point here is the sticker price for the, versus the net price at the AICC institution. So, um, you know, definitely, for example, I'll give you guys our numbers at Holy Names University for the fall 2022-2023 uh, academic school year, our uh, tuition and fees is about 42,000 a year. If you're planning on living on campus, there is about a $14,800 fee there for room and board. So um, all in all, you're looking at about 56,000 for the school year. So that's gonna be the, what we call the direct school cost that a student would be responsible for if they decided to live on campus, you know, have the meal plan and then go to college as well. So that is what we like to say the sticker price versus the net price. So I, I like to say no one's paying 56,000 in one year to attend Holy Names University. You know, a lot of these institutions do have 
uh, merit-based merit -based scholarships as well as need-based scholarships, which you'll see on the on that bottom bullet point there. So for example, at Holy Names University, when a student applies and is accepted, we offer merit scholarships. That Our merit scholarships range between 16 to $25,000 a year. It is renewable for four years, as long as the student is working, is um, you know, staying in uh, good academic standing. So as long as the student doesn't fail out of, the, out of the university, they will continue to receive that merit scholarship. Um, that our need-based scholarships do come out of, um, uh, based on the FAFSA or the DREAM Act. Uh, so we do offer that. It's, it is on a year-to-year -year basis, um, but for most students, you know, the, the FAFSA doesn't change much. So we continuously re, uh, provide the student with the same um, uh, need-based scholarship. A couple of other things um, you'll, you'll see here. So the Cal Grant, uh, I mentioned that a little bit earlier. So Cal Grant is gonna be based on income as well as the student's uh, grade point average. So a student that has higher than a 3.0 or higher and then based on income, you know, could receive Cal Grant A as an Apple. And that um, currently is about $9,220. And that's gonna be good for four years. Um, uh, the Cal Grant B as in boy, um, that's going to be uh, based on income as well, uh, and then based between a 2.0 and a 2.99, okay? Um, and the Cal Grant B also, very similarly, will be good for four years. Pell Grant is going to be federal aid. Um, right now, the Pell Grant is about $6,200, give or take. Uh, and bear with me, folks, the numbers change every year, so it's not something that's set in, set in stone. And so sometimes when we are providing these financial aid award letters to our students, we do have to add estimated because uh, sometimes the federal government or even the, the state um, the state government hasn't um, produced the the budgets for the year. So sometimes Cal Grant goes up or down. I haven't seen it go down in many years. It's only gone up slightly every year. There's also federal work study and federal loans. So. Um, Again, folks, a lot of this information uh, is if it's if it's uh, if it works at Holy Names or at our school, it's going to work at many of the institutions. So, if you're receiving Cal Grant at Holy Names, you're going to be receiving Cal Grant at any institution in the state of California. Okay, if you're going to get Pell Grant at Holy Names, you're going to get Pell Grant at any uh, institution in the United States. The, um, the the federal loans, if you're getting that in the with us, you're going to get that anywhere in the United States because those those are all coming from the federal government. Um, perfect. There is uh, the CSS profile. Um, it, it gives you access to, you know, more, um, more financial aid. We don't require the CSS profile. Uh, sometimes for the more selective schools, the bigger schools do require that. And so you might, uh, your family might have to be filling out the CSS profile, which is provided by the college board. And that's information that goes directly to the school. Awesome. So um, perfect. Well, I'll move on to the next slide if nobody has any questions. Um, we do like to talk about the ADT program, so an associate degree of transfer. This is a fairly new program, especially in California. Um, it's only been around maybe four or five years. So again, in the long scheme of things, it's, it's a fairly new program. Students um, would attend a community college and would work on getting an associate's degree of transfer, what we call ADT. And these are the institutions in Northern California that are going to be receiving that ADT. So it's it's what it's doing is guaranteeing that the student will receive, uh, will be able to, to transfer up to those 60 units. Um, so every uh, private institution has different policies on how many units you can transfer in. For an example, at Holy Names, you can transfer in up to 90 units, 70 of them being lower, the other 20 would be upper division. Um, with the ADT, you know, typically the student is transferring in about 60. So a lot of the CSUs and UCs, that's what they're looking for is 60 units that, that would transfer over. So the AICCU, these are the institutions that have, you know, kind of jumped on the train and said, yeah, we will, you know, we will honor that as well. And so that's going to be, again, because of the small private schools, we've come together with the AICCU and, and we're a part of that program. So a lot of students see it more from community college to one of the CSUs or UCs. Just know that some of these private schools are also um, part of that program as well. Perfect. And so uh, AICC institutions offer unique student support services. So um, 
I like to mention that, you know, when, when you're looking at a small school, you know, it definitely, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you're typically looking at a smaller classroom environment, you know, more personalized attention. Um, especially here in the Bay Area, most of our, most of the institutions here in the Bay Area, from my knowledge, you know, students are being academically advised to take courses or, or to figure out which courses that they need to take. Um, and so, oh, if you can mute yourself, there you go, thank you. Awesome. Um, and so nonetheless, these are some of the institutions here that have a very specific program. Um, and so you'll see it here that Fresno Pacific out in Fresno, California has the Enrollment Express. Uh, some of the institutions are HSIs, Hispanic Serving Institutions, or they have first generation programs. So um, very similar to like uh, uh, EAOP at some of the CSUs or UCs. Uh, yellow ribbon schools. So if you're a veteran um, and you're going to be passing on your benefits uh, to your student, um, some of the institutions like Holy Names are part of the yellow ribbon. And so we're offer we're going to match, you know, whatever, um, whatever is not going to be covered by, by your veteran benefits. Okay. Mills College offers a summer academic workshop. Um, some schools offer a food pantry um, or meal plans. We have a food pantry for our students. Again, it's a resource that we have to offer, not to say that students are using it, but you know, if they wanted to, they can, they have a, we have a food pantry in one of our buildings where students can, can take that out, take some food out there for free. Uh, health, health centers, mental health services, um, and, and then obviously career services. So I would say at some of the private schools that are more intimate that have great connections with their alumni office. Uh, oh, there's a new session starting soon. Okay, hopefully I think I have two more slides here. If, if not, um, I can zoom through. Uh, but the career services, you know, we are connecting students with alumni uh, to go work there at their jobs or if they have an internship as well. These last couple of slides are HNU focused. So if you guys need to jump off and go to the next session, I think we were all starting a little bit late, uh, but if you wanted to stick around, you know, this has some information about Holy Names University. Um, you know, we're, we have no impact in majors. Uh, we rank in top 10 for ethnic diversity, very diverse campus. These are some of the majors that we have, business, bio, kinesiology, nursing, liberal studies are some of our top majors. Um, these are some of the resources that we have to offer, kind of what we just talked about on the slide before. Um, but again, academic advising is pretty standard at some of these small private schools, uh, tutoring centers, uh, research services, all of the above. So um, financial aid, again, I think I talked a little bit about this as well. The only thing that we are offering this upcoming year for our students uh, for the fall 22 is our tuition guarantee. So if a student is Cal Grant and Pell Grant eligible, we're actually covering the cost of their institution. So um, of the, the, we're covering the rest of the cost here at our institution. So as long as you continuously are eligible for Cal Grant and Pell Grant, we will cover the rest of your costs for tuition. So students are paying maybe $600 uh, if they're commuting to our campus uh, for the school year. I see one question, is our nursing program impacted? It is not impacted, but it is competitive, okay? And I can definitely pause and kind of explain that uh, here in just a second, uh, but essentially students are, are, it is not a direct entry program. Uh, students will come to Holy Names University and take two years of prerequisites and then apply to the School of Nursing. Um, so you'll get all the courses that you need to fulfill the prerequisites. And if you get accepted into the nursing program, again, it's not impacted. So you would just cruise on and continuously, you know, keep working on those good grades. But our, our, our nursing program is, a, is an accelerated 15 month program. So again, the courses that you need will be offered and we will be able to work with you to get that done. Awesome. And I know you guys might have to jump to another presentation. So go ahead and jump. But if you guys have any questions, I will definitely hang out here. Um, so thank you all for your time. Hopefully this was informative. And um, I'll drop my email here. If anybody has any questions, they are more than welcome to email me. Um, be happy to answer those questions. Thank you.